And I'm fascinated by all the old industrial buildings throughout the area. Some of them are abandoned and some of them just look that way. In fact, they are working factories, working warehouses. Behind every door, there's all kinds of interesting stories, all kinds of interesting people. I love this view. I love what I can see the river right there through the flood wall. Um, sometimes we get the trains going both directions at the same time. And of course, I'm still the kid. I'm waiting for the guy on the train so I can wave up there. From the loading dock of this old chandelier factory near the riverfront, Kimberly McLean can daydream about trains and travel or anything else she fancies. But inside, she has a business to run a woodworking business. Hey Jacques, let's look at the chair and where you are on it. Named for the ancient Celtic tree worshippers, Druids Woodworking is the company she founded six years ago. And are you feeling like you're on track right now for the schedule? Amid the sawdust and drilling and buzzing saws, okay. McLean oversees the manufacture of fine cabinetry architectural yes. woodwork and custom for, furniture. For joining them up, yeah. The idea was to do furniture and high-end kitchens. Um, and from there we ended up getting, um, going after a lot of commercial projects um, in the meantime and trying to fit in more of a network to do more residential work. Um, and it just kind of, the business quickly grew. Uh, went from one guy to then added another guy. And basically with each job added another guy and added another tool. It's, um, it's grown tremendously, and we're, we are very much a work in progress. Um, we, we don't claim to know it all. It's a, it's a learning curve for us every day. <laughs> at last! McLean was a theater major in college, then a stockbroker at Merrill Lynch. But she traded the financial world for a more domestic pursuit and started designing kitchens as a hobby. Making the cabinetry and the woodwork for those kitchens grew into the full-time business that is now Druids Woodworking. At any time, we're normally working on three to four projects. So Universities, museums, hospitals, and restaurants are among McLean's many clients. Um, over here we've got Ellis Library, it's the University of Missouri in Columbia. Um, in the back we've got part of the Shakespeare set going on. So what are we looking at on this one, Bob? Okay. What does it look like they're adding so far? One, uh, what I really love about this business is that I think it works on two parts of my brain. There's a part of me that always wanted to be a business person um, and think about the day-to-day -day operations and, and the part of me that has worked in places before and, and always said, oh, I don't think you have to treat people like that or I don't think I would do that. Uh, but it's also part to, it's a chance to be creative and to keep saying, we might reinvent the wheel today. Um, and that's what we'll do sometimes. I mean, the guys are very patient with me because we'll start off doing something one way and I'll look, look up and say, you know what, I don't think that's going to work. Let's try this. That's the advantage of being a small business, too. Um, and these are cabinets for... A native St. Louisan, she fondly remembers childhood visits to downtown department stores, where to her mother's dismay, okay. McLean preferred the furniture department okay. to the toy department. Okay. I loved looking at the furniture display rooms and knew if they moved a piece, if they sold a piece. Um, I'm sure some of the sales ladies thought I was obnoxious because I'd come over and make suggestions <laughs> about how I thought they should, you know, how I thought they should move it around. Now she can admire her own furniture. Last year, Druids began making and selling McLean's original furniture designs. This was always in the back of my mind. Um, some of these pieces I actually started designs on seven and eight years ago, long before I had a business. Um, I pulled them out of sketchbooks when I decided last summer to get serious and start producing them. And I've named them all after places around the world, after travels, because I love to travel. And in this piece, I call it the Barcelona sideboard. It's all hand painted by yours truly. Um, and it has sliding doors on both sides, so it can also be in the middle of a room as a sideboard. Uh, but it is, when I first got to Barcelona and I was in the taxi, those are just the colors and the vibrancy of that city that stood out for me. So um, that's how I came about that one. And then um, this is what I call um, the American table. 
It's um, two slabs of solid mahogany and it has inlaid woods of um, ten different woods from around the world going down the middle that forms a ribbon. I call it the American table, one because it has the woods from around the world which I think represents America um, and one because it was built by the diversity of the craftsmen here. There is a history to this craft that she feels connected to and hopes to help preserve. Part of my hope was to inspire more African Americans to pursue cabinet making. Um, um, part of the early history of our country in Philadelphia especially and was that you had black, you had African Americans who were building American furniture. Um, so it's a, I feel like it's a trade or an art that's been lost. Um, part of the way I'm hoping to change that is that I do geometry day for the public school system every year. This is a field where geometry is used basically every day. Um, but trying to, we take in large posters of our work and try to show them pictures and say this is what's possible. Because I think a lot of times when you say to people cabinet making, they don't know what that means. Um, or you say fine furniture, if you're talking to someone who's never seen it, um, you have to show it to them to inspire them and say, you can do this. Um, this can be a career option for you. This kind of quality and craftsmanship is expensive but it is also becoming increasingly rare in today's cookie cutter world. But we need people who are artists and we need people who um, have a hands-on part in the world, a part of creating and I think that's uh, maybe that's what all of this is. It's your chance to feel like you've helped create something. Um, and especially when, when I think for woodwork and the whole name of Druids, you know, that they worship trees and that they were storytellers. And so when we, when we take this tree, you know, we're, we're cutting down a tree to create woodwork. And so we have that whole environmental question about what we're destroying on the earth. So I think you have to really handle it with beauty, um, with grace. Um, and you take it and you create something that you're going to give back and something that's going to last. There are larger, more established companies that dominate the woodworking business, and McLean has watched smaller companies like her own succumb to the pressures of the marketplace. She knows that same fate may someday be hers. But my mother was the one that kept saying, you can try it, and you can do it, and you have nothing to lose. Um, and my grandfather's the one who kept telling me that it's okay to, to fall. When he was trying to teach me how to roller skate and how to ride a bike, that was, that was why I couldn't do it because I kept saying I might fall. And he said, you're going to fall over and over again in your life. Um, and you just get up and you brush yourself off and you try it again. And that's the thing I remember every day, that some days you're just going to fall. <laughs> and the, the art of it, as my grandmother always said, was to get up graciously.